All right, so let's uh, pick up some, some problems from the uh, exercise. Let's do uh, this one first, for example, uh, about uh, say problem 14. So this one. Where is that thing? That is. Okay. So how we should do that? Okay. So let's see. Um, this is what we call a method or separation of variables method. Region of variables, meaning that you uh, put, uh, for example, one variables, everything containing one variable x on one side and the others on the other side. Okay, so in this case, let's start here. So dy over dx is minus y squared x. Here, okay, so let's see what, what we have here. Uh, so uh, let's put y uh, on the uh, left hand side. So here's dy, okay, and you got to divide by uh, uh, this y squared. So y would disappear from the right hand side. Okay. And the rest you get this one. And then dx. Okay. This is what it means what I meant by separate separation of variables. In X in one side, Y in other side. Okay, you see, we, we are we're done with this separate thing. This, and then what else is next is here because the differential is already here. The Y this is the X. Okay. So when we dis integrate this one, this one is y negative two dy, right? And this one is c x x squared plus two. Okay. And here uh, you have a left hand side you compute this one, this indefinite integral using power rule. So this is becomes negative one and one over the new power. So negative one, so this become negative one. So All right. You should have a, a constant, but let's put, just put uh, the constant on just one side either on the left or on the right. Okay, let's put it on the right hand side later with x. Okay, here you go that the, here you have x, you have x squared plus four, but power four. So let's uh, 
do some substitutions. Okay. Now what happened next is that the differential du is 2x dx. So it's just x dx is just one half of du. This is du. Uh, this is u. And when you compute this, you get, let's see. So this is u to the, to the fifth. Okay. And one over this one half remain here. One over five. So in the end, you have one tenth uh, x squared plus two to the fifth. Plus. And then you determine C using this data here. When x equals zero, y is one. Okay, so substitute the point zero one. So you get this is one over y. 1 over y, this is uh, minus 1, the left-hand side. Right-hand side should be 1, 10. So this is a, what you call it? x equals 0. So if I get 0, 0, just 2 to the fifth. 2 to the fifth, that is 2 to the 40, 16, so 32. Okay, so minus 1. This is 3.2 plus D, all right? So this D should be negative 4.2, okay? So particular solutions is, Be one over y equals one over ten x squared plus two to the fifth minus four point two. And so uh, you don't have to write in term of y equal something. Uh, not necessarily written in the form of y equals to all right questions no questions All right, uh, if so, then, yeah. Sir, permission mm -hmm. to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. For using the substitution method, for mm -hmm. we choosing the u, is it the one that always inside the power or can be the outside? Usually uh, inside the power, usually. But the thing here, you need to choose u so that the derivative of u also appear uh, in the integrand. So this is x squared, right? So you have to, uh, because the derivative of this is uh, just 2x. x is just a multiple here. Yeah. Right? So that's that's the, the, the key idea of the use substitutions. Oh, well, we'll, okay, we'll do that later in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, I think that would be next semester. Okay, later, thank you. Later, we compute that. Okay. All right. So, uh, other questions? Not then. Let's pick up some some more problems. All right. So, problem sixteen. 
Word problems. Okay, so you need a curve, equation for curve. The curve uh, passes through this point, uh, one, two. Okay, now uh, whose slope is any point, slope at any point is three times the square of its y coordinate. Okay, so what does it tell you is that. Um, slope. Now, slope is dy over dx. Right? Uh, this is three times the square of its y coordinate. Okay, so this is three times y coordinate. Y coordinate is y. There. Okay. And so this equals. And this tells you that when x equals one, then y equals two. Okay. So we start to work this out using separation of variables. So dy over dx equals 3y squared. So let's uh, put the everything containing y in the left hand side. So you get this thing as before. And then you have 3dx. Okay, is it clear? Up to this point. And then you integrate both sides. Now it is easier in, in fact, because this gives you one minus y. This is just three x plus x. And then you substitute this uh, this one. Yes. Uh, this gives you minus one half y equals two. This is uh, x three. Okay, so c must be uh, negative. Let's see, this is six. Uh, and half, right? Okay. So then the curve is one having these equations. Just uh, type it this way, it doesn't matter. Okay. So you don't need to write this a y equals something unless uh, the, the problem uh, asks you to do so. Right. Okay, questions? Okay, so let's uh, do one more problem. Okay, let's do Thank you. 
Okay, so to uh, 34, for example. So this is the problem. Uh, hot air balloon left the ground rising at four feet per second. So this is the actually the rate of. So this is the speed. This speed. So this is speed going up. Okay. So 16 seconds later, Victoria threw a ball straight up to her friend Colleen in the balloon. At what speed did she throw the ball if it just made to Colleen? Okay. So what happened here? So let's draw some diagram. Okay, so head or uh, have air balloons going this is the ground this is going up with the speed four, four feet per second okay and 16 later later uh, Victoria. So we, we got to assume something here. So Colleen is here. This is Colleen. Okay. And you have Victoria here. Okay. All right. So it's already off the ground and at the ground, uh, Victoria sends a balloon. Uh, so better be right below. Oh, sorry, it's not the loon, it's a ball. Okay. Uh, this has no uh, assumption, so where to, to, uh, to, to go the ball. Yes. Okay, so how to do this one? So ball straight up to her friend Colleen in the balloon. At what speed did she throw the ball if it just made it to Colleen? Okay, so how would you interpret this, uh, this kind of problem? <laughs> Okay, let's see, did we miss something here? Okay. So I have the question is what speed? So um, here we have the balloon.
speed of the loom at any time is four constant. Okay. And this is the speed of the ball, say, same B. Uh, let's see. This is Victoria. So we just say, oh, this is V. So we use V as a. So this Victoria sent a, a ball. Victoria, so this is A. A is, uh, all right, so that's okay. The ball here with some uh, with some some speed. Okay. So that at sixteen seconds later, it will reach this one. Same thing here. So at the same height. So this equation here, 16 later, later. So what does mean here? So we have some somehow we have to the height of the balloon. Uh, at times, let's see, 16 seconds later, should be the same of the height of the, uh, T here. Okay. So how you compute height from here? If it is speed, then the height or the, the position would be the integral of P. Okay, this is just simple for T plus C1, C. Okay, and then you can say that okay, so at sixteenth meter that should be four times sixteen, so okay. And you know that the at time zero, okay. Uh, so initially, height is zero, okay. So you know that C one should be negative sixty four. Okay, so here we have okay, so, here. so HB height of the balloon should be four T minus so it's only ah. Huh. At time zero. Oh, sorry. Why it should be sixty four? If you plug in zero here, so you get uh, H zero equals C one. So C one should be zero. Okay, so then, this just. Okay. All right. And then uh, 
I think the problem is rather strange though. Speedy, she throw the ball if it just made it to Colleen. Um, how do you describe that one? Okay. All right, so suppose the, the speed is. Uh, Let's see. All right. And then uh, when did she have to, to throw the ball? Throw the ball uh, at at the same time at uh, 16 equals 16. Okay, so when it's already 64. And then she throws the ball, but it will take time. Okay, so say this is constant. So suppose I think it has some formula. It's the formula. Um, I think you get me. You get to assume something here. All right, so let's just assume. Assume. So yes, uh, through the ball, this constant speed. So VA is say uh, K. Okay. And it will take some time to get to Colleen, say T north. Okay. So uh, the the height of A so is k t so you integrate this times t plus uh, height i can't can say this right? because it's plus c but then uh, at time uh, zero it is of the height zero okay zero so so C must be uh, zero. So, okay. So then it will take time. All right. So let's assume the ball reach Colleen B. 
20 seconds after uh, Victoria throw. Okay, so that means it's uh, let's the ball afterwards is let's see the height is already 64 and by the time t it is uh, let's see four and hp is this k p so the k is what is k this question right so then this should be uh, the same okay. so then what we have then what we have is 64 plus 40 okay so uh, let's see now we have equals a rather strange thing here. T seconds later is KT. Oh, okay, K minus four. Okay, so then K must be so A should be plus four. All right, so we're apparently missing some information here. The one that's missing is that uh, depends how many seconds after that 16 second he, the ball reached the air okay. So this is not a good uh, good problem that I uh, that I chose actually. Apparently it's a good one because we have to assume. Something. All right. So then. Uh, let it be because that's the problem from the book anyway. So this be okay. All right. If not, then let's continue with the with the next chapter. Next chapter is uh, this one. Definitely. Okay. So uh, the the question is that how to compute the area under the curve. So suppose the curve is above the x-axis. So you would like to find the area under the curve. Okay. Yep. One, the introductions. All right, so that's computing area. Integrals. 
this one is in contrast to indefinite integrals. All right, so as the, I mentioned uh, yesterday that our big thing, our big theme is um, trying to find a proper inverse of differentiations, how to reverse differentiations, all right? So we find that the indefinite integral is not the proper. So in a sense, yes, but it has some extra, extra constant. Right? So it is not a, a proper inverse of the differentiation. So we keep looking for the uh, the the inverse. Is there any a proper inverse of the differential? All right. So let's move uh, to. Uh, some illustrations here. Let's forget about the definite integral first. Uh, what we, our discussion is about area. Under curve. Above the x-axis. So for x between a and b, say. Okay, so you assume it's above the x-axis. So this is the A, this is B, for example. So the question is, what is this area here? Okay. So and let's do some some simple example first. Okay. Axis, this is the axis. So some simple example. Okay, first one. If the function is constant, so a positive constant, so say between a and b. Okay. This is A. This is B. But the thing here is that the sheet is rectangular. So the area is simple. The so area is just the height times the, the base, base length. That's easy. Okay. And the next is, uh, say, this one. Uh, say plus x over 2. Uh, x between 0 and, say, 10. Okay. So this one, you have something like. Uh, 10, so 10, 10, 
if you plug in 10, uh, this is 5, so this is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here. So you're computing this area. Right? But this is an easy shape also because this is a how we call this a parallel railogram. A equals let me see. So the sum of the parallel sides. All right, so this is one. This is uh, let's see. This one is six. Okay. And the this one is ten. So one half of the times the sum of this a uh, sum of the let's see the parallel sides. Right. So three seven seven. There. Okay. Easy. All right. The next is it's also easy. You say this is um, let's see. Square. X between negative one and one. Okay. Guess what is the picture looks like this? What what curve is this? How do we draw this curve? What kind of curve is this one? Can you recognize this one? Do you recognize this curve? X between negative one and one. Is it uh, sine or cos? What, what is? Can you repeat that? I'm not really sure, sir. Uh, okay. How can you recognize this? How you change the, the shape? It's not really change the shape, but the the these equations. So to get try to get rid of the, the square. What you get if you square it? Try to get rid of the square root. Uh, you get a circle, is it? Get the circle, right? Uh, what is the center? And the what center is, is the radius? origin? Origin, radius. Uh, one. Let's guess this. So you have x squared plus y squared equals one. Right. So this is what you get. Okay. So uh, this is what you 
try to compute so this VC. Of radius one. Okay. So this half circle. Okay. So area. That's easy. Uh, circle of radius one. Uh, let's see. Is the pi r uh, pi r square right? So. We got just pi. This is one half of this. Okay. So some, uh, if the curve gives you a uh, something that you can identify the shape and you can uh, find the formula for area, then uh, probably then. Uh, you got it, this problem area. Okay. But then, um, let's see this one, for example. Even though this is quite simple, okay. so say this is one. You know, even though this is a simple one, which is a square, but you don't have the, the formula for computing this one, just from a uh, regular shape. Okay. So no formulas. As in example one, two, three. So somehow you, you we get to define some some method how to compute the uh, with the area, okay. and so this is the how you do this one. Uh, the idea is do approximations. There is one. If you cannot uh, compute exactly, it's approximate. Okay. And then the question is, can you improve the approximations? And if you're able to improve the approximations, then we somehow we take the limit if possible. Okay, so this is the, the, the strategy that we will devise to to compute the area such as this one here. All right. So then let's uh, take a break and then continue this uh, in about five minutes. Take five minutes break. <laughs> 